You know, your skin reveals a lot about what's going on internally, especially your liver. If the liver is good, your skin's going to look great. If it's not that good, you're going to look not too good. So in this video, I'm going to cover all the different things that can happen to your skin just from the liver. Now, I'm talking about having a fatty liver. I'm talking about having cirrhosis and inflammation. Now, the thing about the liver, it's a rugged organ. It's about three and a half pounds located on the right side of your chest cavity, and it takes a beating, and it can regenerate, though. It can come back if you do the right things. So I'm going to give you some really good things to eat to preserve your liver, but first we need to identify um, all the different indications that there is a problem with the liver using the skin. So before you see any problems on the blood test, like high levels of liver enzymes, things like that, um, you're not going to really even know there's a problem with the liver. You might notice some fatigue, but you'll definitely notice a change in your skin. Okay. Now I'm going to cover 15 things that can go wrong with the skin. I'm not going to give you the big, long medical name because you don't really need to know that, but I will include the name on this video so you can kind of see what I'm describing. But the best way to put someone to sleep is just to give them a lot of big words. And I'm not going to do that in this video. All right. Number one, if your skin is yellow, okay, what's happening is the red blood cell, when it breaks down, turns into a certain compound that then can turn your skin yellow if this breakdown product is backing up into the skin. And if it's a severe problem, it can even turn the skin slightly brownish. But typically, yellow skin, yellow eyes is an indication that there's some type of backup in the liver. Um, it could also be in the gallbladder bile ducts as well. All right, next symptom is red palms, okay? If your palms are red, it could indicate that there's a, definitely a liver problem. And also as a side note, if your palms are itchy or the bottom of your foot is itchy, that's another indication that there could be a liver problem as well or a gallbladder issue. All right, a red nose, okay? Let's say the nose is red, it's swollen. Uh, you see this a lot with alcoholics that is an indication that there's probably liver cirrhosis. Okay, red cheeks, they call that rosacea. That usually can be an alteration in the microbiome in your gut, but it's also an indication that there's a liver problem. But there's other indications too. It could be an adrenal issue, but typically it's gonna be a combination of a liver problem or you're just lacking friendly bacteria. All right, next thing is loss of hair. It could be in your armpits, or on your legs, if you're a guy, that's a situation where the liver is damaged and you don't have that, that buffer that regulates excess estrogen in the body. And so as the estrogen increases, then you start losing that hair and the skin becomes very, very soft and even shiny. You see this um, as a man ages, when they get older, their lower legs don't have any hair anymore and it's very, very super shiny. That's excess estrogen building up because the liver is not buffering that amount of estrogen. All right, next one is paper money skin. What is that? Well, if you ever looked at crinkled uh, old money, it has a certain texture to it. A lot of times the skin becomes that texture when you have liver damage. And you see this on your cheeks or the folds on your face. And the skin is very, very thin. And sometimes you'll see it on the back of the hand too, where there's, it's like paper thin skin. It's a loss of collagen, which is part of the normal aging process, but you see it also with liver damage. All right, spider veins, okay. Um, specifically the ones that have a little red spot with these little veins coming out of that one red dot. And you'll see this on the abdomen. You can see it on the face. You can see it in other parts of the body. That again is excess estrogen, okay? Because the liver buffers um, excess estrogen. Now we have the white, yellow growths around your eyelids. Okay? That is deposits of cholesterol. And usually the person has high level LDL and low HDL and high triglycerides. That's a situation where they're doing way too many carbs. They usually have insulin resistance. They're usually overweight because the cholesterol is backing up into the tissues and out through the eyes. Uh, a simple remedy would be to get off the carbs, do intermittent fasting, and take purified bile salts. All right, then we have purple flat little bumps on your skin, okay? You might see them uh, in the lower extremity or throughout the body. That's an indication that there's a liver problem. 
uh, most likely an excess amount of estrogen. Sometimes you'll see that too after pregnancy where you have this spike of estrogen. Then we have purple little spots, which are kind of just uh, not raised, they're not bumps, but they're just discoloration. Another symptom that there's a liver issue. Now, the liver spots themselves, where you have this slightly brown little spot or extra pigmentation, is not really coming from the liver. Uh, it's aging spots. That is a lack of vitamin C. This is why um, a real common remedy would be those uh, creams that you put on your skin that always have a base of vitamin C. This is just an indication that you need more vitamin C to make those go away. But I would recommend taking vitamin C, getting it from food and taking it um, orally. And just realize that when you're on a high carb diet or you have high levels of sugar because you're diabetic, that can cause a vitamin C deficiency because it blocks vitamin C. The chemistry of glucose is very, very similar to um, vitamin C. So the body will always pull in glucose before vitamin C, blocking it. All right, the white scaling plaques, as in dandruff. Now that's usually a fungal growth and selenium is one of the remedies that they use for this fungus. And a really good remedy would be to take um, some olive oil uh, with oregano oil and kind of combine that. I'll put a link down below of how to do it, but you just rub it into the scalp and it'll get rid of dandruff. But realize that the real problem with dandruff is more internally and it's usually a problem with your uh, microbes in your gut slash a liver issue. Um, there's also topical probiotics that you can put on your scalp. Uh, I will be doing some videos on that as well. Then we have uh, other things like the crusty red nodules that can occur on your skin. So as you can see, a lot of um, skin problems are connected or associated with liver. And then there's a condition called ascites where you have this uh, fluid filled sac in your gut. You usually see uh, the guy on the beach in the Speedo with this huge belly, but he has, his legs are like stick thin and his arms are thin and he has stretch marks on the abdomen. That's coming from a very severe cirrhosis of the liver and it's called ascites and you get these stretch marks, but not all stretch marks are liver, but certain stretch marks can be if it's coming from ascites. All right, a flattened face where you're losing fat on the face uh, that can happen with uh, certain liver issues because you're not able to produce the growth hormone that works through the liver anymore. And you're losing certain amounts of protein that the skin just kind of falls flat on your face. And then maybe I should tell you the name of that. It's called facial lipodystrophy. All right, now for the good news, okay? Uh, there are foods that you can start eating that can improve the liver and you can help to bring the liver back. Uh, one of the best foods that you can possibly eat for the liver is radishes. Honestly, I, I don't like radishes. My wife does. I, I don't like them, but I will eat them on a salad. But radishes are amazing for the liver. They're part of the cruciferous family. They're very bitter, but they have properties to help reverse a fatty liver. They trigger certain types of enzymes that help the phase one, phase two detoxification to get rid of poisons. They increase the bile production of the liver. Radishes, hands down, are probably one of the best vegetables for the liver. Then we have lemons. I just did a video on this. You blend the whole lemon, very, very bitter. Anything bitter is good for the liver. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link down below, but you can blend it with water, with a little stevia. Man, that's really good for a fatty liver. And then we have apple cider vinegar, which supports um, your blood sugars, which actually makes insulin more sensitive. And that alone is going to reduce the fat on your liver. Then arugula, which is one of my favorite cruciferous vegetables, very bitter, very good for the liver. It's way better than a regular lettuce. So you might wanna use that in your salads instead of other types of vegetables. But anything leafy green is gonna be awesome for the liver. And of course, out of all the vegetables, the cruciferous vegetables are a superior vegetable for the liver. Then we have garlic is really good for the liver. I mean, I've done so many videos on that. And then we have sea kelp. Sea kelp helps regulate excess amount of estrogen, okay? So that's another really good thing to add to the mix. Mustard, any type of mustard is really good for the liver. Um, in regular yellow mustard, you have turmeric, you have mustard seed, you have apple cider vinegar, paprika, really good for the liver. Dandelion greens, very bitter, awesome for a fatty liver. And then egg yolks, which is loaded with lecithin, which is the antidote to cholesterol. Eggs are very awesome for a fatty liver. Now, if you haven't seen my video on how you can identify liver problems through your foot, 
check this out. It's right here. 